After more than a decade of waiting, we finally got to see the second installment of Avatar hit theaters. Despite its three-hour runtime, did you know that a portion of Avatar 2 was so bad it was cut after test screening? That's for you to tune in and find out. James Cameron, the director of Avatar The Way of Water, cut a scene that wasn't effective from the final cut after several test screenings. Although Avatar 2 managed to fit a lot into its longer 3-hour, 12-minute running time, some scenes had to be eliminated from the finished product to keep the plot moving. Still, the Tolkien played a significant part in tying the Metkayina clan to Jake's Omidakaya people. Some of this erased content included aquatic life from the Metkayina's home on Pandora. Avatar 3 will still have some plot aspects that will never be revealed, even though some of the deleted sequences from Avatar 2 will be upgraded and rewritten for it. So what was this scene they cut from the movie, you ask? Well, it's part of the ending that was supposed to include a certain tribe. James Cameron himself revealed this information in one particular fan screening. So here's what was supposed to go down in the movie. With the aid of the Metkayina tribe, Jake Sully attacks Stefan Lang's Miles Quaritch and the RDA in the movie's third act. But obviously, we don't see them in that part of the movie, do we? The Metkayina are not present with the other key characters until the climactic battle has ended, and this happens halfway through the conflict. When questioned about this specific scene, Cameron explained that there was once a scene in which Metkayina families were reunited at the end of the war, but it was cut from the finished movie owing to negative test audience reactions. With so many people present, the sequence ended up being a bit distracting to the core family, as Cameron explained, and it was deleted because people were bothered by it in test screenings. And yes, the movie chose to stay loyal to its main theme, which is family. James Cameron went on to explain how and why they shot that sequence. Nonetheless, they ultimately concluded that it was quite disruptive to the core family. According to him, some people are bothered by it, and others aren't even aware of it. So it's just one of those situations where you can never give a movie a perfect rating. Aside from that, the widely respected director added that you can never expect to receive a perfect score from everyone, so to heck with it. It. And although it might not have been the best move for all viewers, the filmmaker went deeper into the scene, observing that the situation at the time required more focus. Nari. 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 Tony Ull, stronger. Look, that's just a little window into the creative process, Cameron said. We had that the other parents were there. We accounted for them, and we just felt that we needed to narrow the spotlight. And maybe it was not such a great decision, but that was the decision we made at the moment. It's not surprising that James Cameron intended to incorporate Jake's family and the Metkayina leaders in the ambush against Quaritch, given how important the concept of family is in Avatar 2 and will be for the next sequels. But more on that later. It would seem logical for the clan leader leaders to band together to get their children back, since both kin units were in danger. And you know what? It did well for the movie. In the end, having only Jake take on the major antagonist helped to keep the plot focused on the climactic struggle. which saw him engaged in a one-on-one -on -one fight with Quaritch following the first Avatar movie. After learning the Water People's ways from the remainder of the novel, this also gave Jake the chance to demonstrate his commitment to the Na'vi people as a whole. He became a better leader by putting his own life in danger to save two kids he'd only known for a short while. This added drama to a film that already had a lot of sorrow. Fans will be interested to watch how the last fight of Avatar 3 plays out, especially in terms of how populated the final battle is, even if the Fire Clan will be replaced by the Water People. Pretty cool, right? Honestly, I think it would really be distracting to see the number of characters present on the screen during the crucial scene. So kudos to Cameron and the team for a great decision. Now, let's talk about Avatar's central theme, family. Unsurprisingly, this will be the theme of future Avatar movies as well. Disney acknowledged that the four Avatar sequels all have the importance of family as their main theme in the official press release for Avatar The Way of Water. 
Shakespeare will go first. Producer of Avatar 2, John Lando, explained the choice to emphasize family, calling it a more significant concept on a global scale. I tell people that Jim writes movies with themes that are bigger than their genre, and that's why his movies resonate with people, and there's no greater theme universally than family. This shouldn't come as a surprise, as James Cameron, the director of Avatar The Way of Water, had mentioned this concept in an earlier interview with Gizmodo back in 2018. In fact, James Cameron dubbed the Avatar series series a generational family saga. So yeah, we'll pretty much see how Jake and Neytiri's family will fare in future movies. In the meantime, it was reported in the same news release that Cameron planned to have all four sequel screenplays before beginning The Way of the Water's production. What's more, the award-winning filmmaker said that he wanted to first plan out all the stories, while also capturing the actors across numerous films, before pushing on with the live-action aspect of production. And speaking of family, it looks like we'll be seeing more depth in the family. I mean, we did see that in the second film. Now, enough about family. Let's talk about the next movie's villain, the Fire Navi. But will they be the villain throughout the whole film? We don't know for sure. But what we do know is that the lead role is already cast. With less than two years until the release of Avatar 3, fans have already learned some important details about what to anticipate from Jake Sully's upcoming journey. With the Navi people on Pandora and this unnamed third story, Jake and his family will face up against the Ash people, who have the power of fire. Surprisingly, this tribe will portray the people of Pandora in a far more unfavorable light than either of the first two movies did. Yet as viewers eagerly anticipate returning to a fresh area of Pandora's vast environment, a recent report has given a face to at least one of the Ash people. Una Chaplin has reportedly been cast in an intriguing part in James Cameron's upcoming Avatar 3 film, which will debut at the end of 2024. I bet many of you still remember her from her role in one of HBO's epic fantasy dramas. In recent years, Chaplin has gained the most notoriety for her role as Queen Talissa Stark, Rob Stark's wife in HBO's popular series Game of Thrones. And yeah, unfortunately, she got killed off in the notorious Red Wedding scene from Season 3, Episode 9. I believe all of us are still traumatized by that. Anyway, back to Avatar. Virang, who is confirmed to be the ruler of the Fire Navi Nation in this new sequel. is the name of the character Chaplin will play in Avatar 3. Also, it was made known that Jake Sully and the Omadakaya people will be antagonistic to the Fire Nation in this new film, potentially positioning them as one of the key antagonists. With that, this has been today's video about the Avatar 2 scene being so bad that it was cut after the test screening.